Yes, Honorable Minister. So the stadium now under construction, it's a 35,000 seater stadium, which uh, with all the facilities and the present is over 90% complete as you can see. Uh, already the scoreboard is up and is functioning, the electronic scoreboard. One third of the stadium is covered, not completely, and uh, all the seats are here. The seats here are all on ground, they are not put because the scaffolding, they are waiting to have the roof. And uh, that is the current work going on now. Otherwise, all the places and their facilities for press center, there are changing rooms for teams that are coming to sports. They are all around the stadium under the seats are offices. Offices for, and shops for selling sports equipment and gymnasia. So all around under our offices. And uh, this is the VIP grandstand that you are seeing. Now, I don't know your excellence if you had time. We had actually earlier planned to take you up because you would have seen. But if you are okay from here, uh, uh, to, to this level? Okay, yeah, excellent. I decided to bring it to use because sport is no longer, you know, just about games. It's about economic empowerment to our youth. Their constant engagement to have their energy in the right direction, whether it's in employment or in sports. So we decided to do this, and this, this work you have seen is 100% of public resources. No cover borrowed, we don't owe any contractor, the contract is on schedule, and by the grace of God, Mr. President will be here to come and commission this among so many other giant projects in the state. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. I want to tell you that the, the central pitch athletes that are going to be running around, the work is also in progress. The pitch work, most of the other work has been finished. The planting and everything is supposed to end on 30th of May. And uh, yeah, that, is the, that is the pitch work. Yes, sir. The guests of honors will be seated here, and then the seats behind, directly behind, are the VIP seats, directly behind here. And directly up there is the press gallery, the people who are going to be commentating and so on. That's where there are all rooms inside there, and so on. Yes. <laughs> The minister, okay, one of the minutes. Which we have already ordered. For the month of May, it will be completed by the grace of God. Well, I think your excellency, we saw similar projects. For instance, I can uh, remember vividly that we saw a similar report we saw in Plato, and here we are in Katina in another viable project that will be able to enhance sports activities in this country. In fact, I'm really impressed with the standards so, that we are seeing here. And we are happy that uh, what we saw here in this stadium, especially with regards to the environment, is very, very conducive. We are also happy that uh, Your Excellency has not borrowed to have this uh, structure in place. So I think by the time we complete this project, we'll have international matches and games that will be played here. And as you said, it will attract a lot of revenue for the states. I therefore want to also on behalf of the team, and of course on behalf of uh, our Honourable Minister, want to commend His Excellency for having the focus to have these valuable projects here in Casina. I want to assure you that uh, 
this will support other international uh, stadiums which is owned by federal government and other state governments in the country. I want to therefore commend you most sincerely and I hope that by the time we complete this project, the issue of sustainability and maintenance, because we have seen what is happening to most of our stadiums in the country, for instance, the one in Abuja and some other parts of the country. So we want to plead that by the time we finish this stadium, there should be the culture of maintenance and sustainability so that uh, the people of this state and by large the Nigerians will have the opportunity to utilize the facilities that are here. So congratulations, Your Excellency. My name is what are the local content input here and then at what cost is this project being revived? Thank you. Uh, the entire cost of the project is about 3 billion naira initially. Then we had to put in the tartan truck and other modern facilities. I think it's less than 4 billion altogether. And the local contents, of course, you can see when you do a project like this, it's not just about the building. It's about empowering people. The cement seller come to sell. The road seller sells his rod, iron rod. The sand seller sells his While the project is going on, people make some money and make a living. And after the project is completed, the most important thing is sustainability. We have invited the Boca Juniors Football Academy from Argentina. They are certain by school. We sign an MOU with them so that we keep it going. And I'm soon we'll have people from all over Nigeria coming to learn soccer professionally, like Diago Madonna. Thank you very much. More questions? And the state, when we came in on board in 2007, set up a street football club known as the Casino Spotlights. If you look at your chart, you see they are performing very well, even though they are a young club. And uh, like I said, the Boca Junior Football Club of Argentina are coming here to set up an institution of sports, specifically soccer, to learn and advance the soccer talent here in Katsina and in Nigeria. So obviously, uh, we have in our minds whatever we can do to support the development and growth of our youth. We are, you have a facility for the youth, apart from sports. After here, you will find somewhere, we are going somewhere where you will see what we are doing with our youth, practically. Thank you. And Sultan can tell you, it's already the grass is already on his way. Yes. And by the time you come one month from now, this place will be all green, but hold on for him. Yes, synthetic FIFA approved synthetic because we have problem here of dry season uh, that is on. So we, the decision was taken to have synthetic grass and Nigerians. All of us, there is no, no single foreigner among us. So at least the governor has empowered we Nigerians to work on such a gigantic project. Thank you, sir. Yes. And indigenous contractors and consultants, as you see. The orthopedic hospital and the child and maternity care hospital were 100% built by local contractors, indigenous of Kazana. So we have a mix. Where it's necessary to bring in experts, we do, but we try to empower our people and we we'll continue to do our best. Thank you very much. This is just the first day of the second day of the tour. Yesterday was half day. Um, I said something during the course call. I said uh, those who truly want to serve, and that for those of us who happen to be younger, not really so young anymore, because we are in our fifties. It's important that we leave a legacy behind. Uh, what we are seeing in Katina, particularly today, the quality of projects, the vision of these projects, the services being rendered and intended to be rendered, these all are done. Orthopedic Hospital, University, uh, Women, Maternal and Child Hospital, now in the stadium. All without a couple borrowed. 
in the last six years of your administration. This, this is actually a story of commitment, accountability, transparency, and service delivery. We can say this without any fear or favor. And we keep saying it. So, if Katina can do this without much internal revenue generation, then it is very clear that even now, all states in the north have the money to develop. Because there's no miracle. We are seeing it. We have seen it here. We saw what we saw in KB. And yesterday, because uh, the government Zamfara is just two years, we have also seen evidence of some serious work going on there. So, the, the thing to be said is, those who want to develop their states, they will do so. Those who want to develop and render service to people, there is the capacity, there is the resource to do so within this country. And I think, as we go around, like I say, we are not talking about... Uh, uh, one came second or third. No. But the story is telling itself to Nigerians. If Katina is able to do this without borrowing, then the major question in the country yeah, today is about resource management and vision. It's about resource management and vision. That is what we are talking about. And I think this is where we are headed. I said this, that's why this good governance tool is important. Now, there are people who specialize so much noise all over the place. So when this tour is about to start their G3, they don't want the tour because this is what is revealing. And I think, honestly, for the fact that we are in the Northwest, you know, where there is no oil revenue, where we don't have the hostage revenue like you have in Lagos and other places, Lagos alone has something in the region of 19 to 21 billion from, in, from internal re generated revenue monthly. <laughs> But 19, 21 billion every month from infrastructure already built over decades. Not that kind of money, in addition to the one that goes from Abuja. Look at what Katina has achieved. And is achieving because we're still uh, the road is still on. Look at also what KB has achieved. Uh, I think honestly the chickens will come home to roost. <laughs> and what we are saying is uh, this good governance store is actually something that the governor of Zamfara said we should do it every two years. We want people to work. That is what this store is all about. We want people to work. And we want the evidence of that work to be shown to all Nigerians. And um, I haven't said one important thing. All this infrastructure is happening in Katina because you have been able somehow to maintain peace and tranquility in Katina State. That, the result of that piece is what we are seeing now. The result of that is what we are seeing now. And I think when we will continue the tour and as we move around, some of the silent lessons will be made known. And I keep making the point. Democracy, there is nothing like it. The media must help me and help this nation. I am sad because I'm a journalist. If you go and read the pages of our newspapers, even this morning, you will not hear any of these stories there. You will not see anything that is going on in this country. What you will hear is APC, PDP, ACN, and it's the same people who are talking. The same people who are making the news, abusing people, insulting people, making wild allegations, but nobody is discussing development. And then everybody is condemned. I see if every politician in this country is a thief or a crook or nothing is happening in this nation. It is not true. And I think I want to call on my colleagues who are on this talk. Somewhere, in some places, we have to bury our heads in shame. Because we are not reporting this country correctly. And I'm saying so as a reporter, not as a minister of information. And if this talk didn't go around, look at the kind of impression that people who come into this country think of our people and of this country. I want to say that uh, from what we have seen in the last uh, 10, two weeks of touring the states in the Northwest, I can confidently say that Nigeria is a, a work in progress. That it is not every story that is about Boko Haram and violence. There is a lot of constructive work that is happening in the North, and we need to report it. So that Nigerians and other foreigners who come here, 
we know that this part of the country is also about development and that serious work is going on to continue to just give you know short shrift to every story here unless it has to do with some violence nobody reports unless it has to do with some my insult nobody reports i think it is sabotaging development effort this is my own conviction and i think i'm calling on the media once again that as we go around the purpose of it is for us to re-examine our approach to journalism and our role in the development country. Journalism has a specific role to set agenda for development, to discuss progress, of course to discuss shortcomings. I'm not saying that there are no negative. There are no negatives to be reported. But we cannot just discuss as if this nation is all about negatives. We went for the conference, the International Honorary, Honorary Investment, Investment Forum in England, and everybody was complaining that, look, there is so much work in this country, but everywhere they open a page of newspaper in this country is only about insult and abuses. This should not be the case. This should not be the case. I know many newspapers are set up for politics, but it must not be politics for destruction. You can still be a politician and allow your newspaper to run normally and i think honestly this tour must also lead to a serious discussion on the direction of our media and this democracy it is very very important i use this opportunity to discuss this because like i said yes we can still do better as politicians this is not to say that we are performing at our best but we need to discuss progress so that we can move and improve on the work that is being done let me congratulate you for this stadium and particularly the indigenous architects that designed this stadium because this is the important thing you know when when we went to the olympic in china and we saw the bed nest stadium which was unveiled by china to the world you know it made that nation feel proud about their own ingenuity and their capacity now we have nigerians who are skilled people there are many Nigerians that can compete favorably with any other person in the world. But we don't give them the opportunity. We always think that every service must be hired from outside so that revenue will flow abroad rather than flowing into this country. Now, for every, every service you give to foreigners when you have a local alternative, when you don't have local alternatives, yes, I mean, the world is a global village. We all cannot have everything we need. But I think when we use our indigenous people, what happens is that we increase their capacity. When next they're going to design a, a stadium, they will improve on this one. But if they have never designed it because we always think that it must be design, designed by foreigners, then we will never develop our country. No country is developed by outsiders. They can help us, but we must have that capacity to trust ourselves and give our people the difficult jobs to do. Where they fail, we ask people to support them. Because developing capacity, internal capacity, is the responsibility of leadership. And I've seen the orthopedic hospital, and I'm seeing this stadium with consultants that are indigenous of Katina. I am impressed. And I think we should go in that direction.